The world is facing a convergence of global crises, intensified by the inrush of the COVID-19 pandemic that has exposed the fragility of the response mechanisms at all levels of governance and demanded actions and initiatives that can reduce the impact of non-military threats as climate change, food, water, energy, insecurity, inequality, natural disasters, among other issues, on populations, countries, and regions of vulnerability. While important multilateral protocols and agreements have been adopted over the past years, such as the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, and the Paris Agreement, world leaders have recognized that we need more engagement and effectiveness. On the occasion of the commemoration of the 75th anniversary of the United Nations, UN member states reinforced a call for upgrading of the UN and building a more inclusive and effective multilateralism. This is a result of the perception that currently there is no global body with decision-making authority to tackle non-military global threats. The global governance system is currently very fragmented, with each agency dealing only with a narrow area of expertise. For example, WHO with health, UNAP with the environment, UNFCCC with climate change, ICAO with aviation, IMO with shipping, UNIDO with industrial development, UNESCO with education. IMF and the World Bank with finances, WTO with trade. But today's challenges have many dimensions. So the COVID-19 pandemic also created financial problems and its cause is connected to how we relate to nature. Climate change is caused by industrial development, aviation and shipping, so it cannot be solved in isolation. We need a holistic approach to address these challenges effectively. It is in this context that the design of a new global governance system becomes crucial to respond effectively to the challenges of today and tomorrow. Attentive to this demand and align with the Our Common Agenda OCA released by UN Secretary-General Antonio Guterres, the Foundation for Global Governance and Sustainability, FOX, is proposing a United Nations Global Resilience Council, GRC. Curtis, could you please briefly uh, present the GRC proposal for us? FOX uh, has proposed the establishment of a Global Resilience Council as a UN Security Council for non-military threats. No vetoes, it's not about um, wars, but it is about a war of humanity against the real challenge that we're facing all of us together, climate, uh, pandemics, food and water insecurity, inequalities. Those things are not dealt comprehensively by anybody in the UN system or the global governance system. And that's what we want to establish that we eventually come together to address those challenges. Why do we need a Global Resilience Council? Because there is no other body that deals with these threats to human security in a comprehensive way. We have a fragmented global system of specialized organizations, one dealing with the climate change, the other with health issues, the other with uh, financial issues, but they don't come together and there is no monitoring of them working together to address comprehensively the big crisis. So we need that to coordinate the whole of humanity response to these challenges that affect us all. What would the GRC deal with? The GRC will, will deal with the crises that are not covered, are not addressed by any other body in a comprehensive way. We have the Security Council for military threats, and it has its problems with the veto power, and you see the wars uh, that keep starting on our planet. Other agencies like the WHO 
deal only with health issues or the health aspect of this big crisis. Climate change has the Paris Agreement, but it cannot be implemented if the financial sector, the industries, everybody, all countries and non-state actors come together. So the GRC will deal with all these issues in a comprehensive way. Who will be the members of this Global Resilience Council and how would they make decisions? The members of the Global Resilience Council would be countries again, like we have for the Security Council, the General Assembly, the other intergovernmental organs of the UN. But in addition to them, we would have non-state actors like civil society, private sector, um, religious uh, leaders, uh, local authorities, scientific unions, all of them would be connected and would offer their advice from their perspectives so that decisions made would incorporate those elements and then all these other constituencies would help implement those decisions. So it would be a joint effort of humanity the central body, intergovernmental, perhaps with regions represented, like the African Union, the European Union, representing their respective uh, countries, that it has to be decided by the countries themselves. Uh, but eventually it will be together a joint effort of government actors and non-governmental actors coming together.